Welcome back to Strange Form. Today, we will be looking at something special. Every single Hot Toys 1-6 scale Xenomorph from 2007 to current, which totals 11 figures. The first in our lineup being the Alien Warrior from James Cameron's Aliens, blue and brown versions, released in 2007 as part of the movie masterpiece series. These figures represent a time in Hot Toys history when they were a much smaller company and attempting to skirt licensing issues by releasing figures slightly unassembled so that they fell under the category of model rather than toy. It's hard to believe that in just a decade and a half, they would become one of the biggest pop culture license holders on the collector's market. Even back in 2007, these were relatively expensive, retailing for over $100. Now, technically, the AVP aliens were also released at the exact same time, but I decided to put these first because the very third Hot Toys movie masterpiece character was Hicks. So the aliens line was actually running before the AVP line. Back then, I personally had the power loader, which was an incredible piece, and I regret selling it to this day. But it, the ED-209, and their first Iron Man figure ended up financing my budding photography and videography career. So if you like what you see here, you can thank Hot Toys. From 2005 to 2007, Hot Toys jumped into the Aliens game with five Space Marines, a power loader with a Ripley, and an independent Ripley figure. And then finally, these two variations of the Xenomorph, as well as a line of miniature capsule figures, each coming in a 1-6 scale egg. For a long time, the iridescent foil rainbow package design was the hallmark of a Hot Toys collectible, and most of these packages sported a window flap and slipcover design. The packaging of most of these alien figures is nearly identical all the way up to the dog alien, and in the case of these first two alien figures, only a sticker slapped on the front showed the difference between the items. Of all the figures I'm about to show you, this one is by far and large the most fragile. For some reason, the blue alien warrior had a flaw with the plastic joints, both at the knee and elbow, and especially on the right side for some reason. And with just about every alien figure, all the way to the newest one, there have been issues with rubber rot plaguing the line. It was a bold call to cast the face muscles in stretchy rubber, and it definitely looks cool. But this is also one of the largest points of failure for the entire figure series. It's extremely hard to find some of these figures with attached cheek muscles, and it's a near impossible part to repair. The one I'm holding here has broken joints, so I got it for cheap, and I intend on repairing it. But it also allows me to manhandle the inner jaw gimmick without being terrified I'm going to ruin it. The interesting thing is that most of this figure is cast in pretty sturdy plastic. But the joints on this one actually started to turn to black powder when I simply touched it with the tip of my finger. That being said, my plan is to replace all the joints on this one with metal armature parts. Strangely, the brown variant, only identifiable by this repaint version sticker, isn't as fragile. And the joints seem to be made of sturdier plastic. Even the rubber feels slightly less soft, so something must have been changed between versions. Beyond this, there is absolutely no difference between the two figures. The original Alien Warrior from the second film was in fact brown, sort of like a cockroach. It was James Cameron's steely lighting that caused the creature to be perceived as blue, and from Hot Toys to NECA, this has been a popular way of double dipping on a single sculpt. Out of the box, the alien comes with two sets of hands one in a static position, and the other soft with bendy wire running through it. All told, the paint applications are clean, and the figure is fairly striking at almost 16 inches tall, but it is also wildly inaccurate and very highly stylized. This one reminds me more of Takeyuki Takeya's take on the creature than what was found in the film. And this isn't a bad thing necessarily, but if you're looking for film accuracy, Hot Toy's newest version of this figure is maybe the best bet for you. And these aren't by any stretch of the imagination action figures. Merely picking them up will cause parts to drop off. There is not a single joint that is tight, and the item cannot be displayed without a stand that supports most of its weight. So this does in fact feel like a model, more than a figure. On a side note, the rear tubes on both figures were infuriating to get into position, especially because you risk damaging the rest of it when trying to press the pegs down into their holes, so much so that I nearly left them off for the turntable section. I can see why some people would glue these into position. The brown figure stands slightly better and can be held up by the much lighter Mezco Alien stand. From here on out, the figures get more robust with each iteration. Oddly enough, these are not only the first true 1-6 scale posable alien figures, but Hot Toys is the only company to produce any 1-6 scale alien figures. There's a few 12-inch figures, a couple of statues that are slightly larger than 1.6 or slightly smaller. But as it stands, right now, Hot Toys is the only game in town, and every single one of these is out of production. With the popularity of this creature design, it's really strange more companies haven't taken a swing at it. 
Now, on to Aliens vs. Predator. Released around the same time as the Aliens figures, these are some truly strange items, in that they have the dorsal spine that wasn't found on anything after the first two films. Other than that, the general design of the creature was the same from Resurrection all the way through AVPR. So Hot Toys is about to get a lot of mileage out of this sculpt. Interestingly, the product photos they chose for the front of the box is a damaged figure. As you can see here, the tendons around the cheeks are ripped, and the lower part of the jaw is slipping off the plastic underneath. And this isn't the last time that Hot Toys will try to manage our expectations for figure sturdiness. This figure has much better joints and feels heavier overall in hand than the Aliens figures. The paint applications are simple, but not messy. And besides the spine, this figure looks more like the film costume than the Aliens version. This time they have done away with the alternate static hands and just gone with the bendy wire fingers which works better than I was expecting. The torso proportions make the figure look a little bit goofy, as well as does the double-wide Bruce Campbell chin. Though the first Alien vs. Predator film is a fun ride, it's also one of Hollywood's biggest missed opportunities. Had they followed the original Dark Horse comic storyline and gone with a standard R rating found in every other film in the Aliens and Predator franchise, I think right now we would be looking back at a robust series rather than two flash-in-the-pan flops. It's truly disappointing that the film had to come out at Hollywood's expand the audience to the whole family no matter the genre phase. It's my hope that someday the industry will return to this mashup with a more serious eye. It's sometimes very hard as a fan to sit by the sidelines and watch properties fail for obvious reasons to everyone but the people producing them. But again, all things considered, this is a robust chunk of plastic, feeling more like a scaled-up NECA figure than a museum-quality piece. And like NECA, Hot Toys was able to get a lot of mileage out of this design, releasing a grid version of the creature seen with the battle damage sustained from the Predator's cable net, and being the first one to come with a 1-6 scale wire bendy facehugger. And though they did redesign the outer package to reflect the new figure, rather than just putting a sticker on it, the interior packaging is pretty much identical to the previous figure, including the picture with the broken cheek muscle. Other than the green crosshatching across the dome, this is the exact same figure as its predecessor. And though that tiny bit of green paint is the only difference, this one was produced in smaller numbers and tends to fetch a much higher price. That being said, I used my Japanese auction hack to get most of these, and only paid around $120 for it. But the process wasn't without its headaches. I went through three of these before finally receiving one that was undamaged and included the facehugger. The first two coming from eBay, one being just a bunch of broken limbs rattling around in the box. As in, no plastic tray, just a broken figure dumped in the box. And that box was full of active mold. Luckily, eBay stepped in, and I was able to return it. And I had a similar experience with the Requiem figure, but we'll get more into that in a moment. I will say that the bright green paint does make the figure look more striking than the other but I do wish they would have actually molded indentations into the dome. The last of the AVP-1 figures I don't think was ever intended to be an AVP figure at all, but a sneaky way of releasing a resurrection figure, as the paint scheme on this one is definitely reminiscent of the creature from Alien 4. So technically, Hot Toys has released a figure from each of the four original films. Again, the ripped mouth. Packaging-wise, there's nothing different from the grid alien. But right when you get it out, you immediately notice that the color scheme is wildly different. Not just the plastic, but the paint applications as well. And for some reason, mine had a 1-6 scale egg rolling around inside the package. This one was another Japanese auction figure, and it was from a shop owner who was liquidating his stock and closing the store forever. I love Google Translate, as it's the only way I would have known this. So I'm guessing he just tossed the egg in the box as a little present. In my personal opinion, the browns suit this design better than the gray. And I really like the panther stripes on the tubing. And despite being the exact same mold as the other two, this one does feel like a brand new figure and is definitely my favorite of the three. Though I enjoy Alien Resurrection, I believe it was a giant misstep turning the film into a sardonic action comedy rather than keeping with the tone and gravity of the previous installments. But one thing that never did bother me was the semi-organic redesign of the creature. The fact that they were tainted by Ripley's DNA made this an easy thing to dismiss as not truly an alien story, but more of a quirky side story about a mad science experiment gone awry. But unfortunately, Resurrection and AVP put audiences and critics off enough to destroy the prospect of any further standalone Alien films for more than two full decades. Love it or hate it, Alien vs. Predator Requiem did give us some interesting new designs. From the Wolf Predator 
to the Predalien, and being the only other film than Aliens in the entire franchise to give us a ridged xenomorph head. The film had enough new material to launch a thousand collectibles, and honestly I think that if you took the same story and set it on a colony world in the future, and shored up some of the action sequences so that they were easier to see, the film probably would have been received better. Though a somewhat silly concept, the Predalien is maybe one of the most interesting designs we've gotten since the original Queen Alien, and you can see why collectors gravitate towards items from this film, despite not really liking it that much. And here is where we see more Broken Hot Toys promotional material. The cheek strands on this one are so fragile that they are broken on every picture on the box. Both the cover and interior hero shots have them snapped off, and I nearly caused an international incident by sending one of these back to Japan after receiving it to find that it not only had damaged cheek muscles, but was missing the facehugger as well. And on top of that, the box was full of dead insects. The seller informed me that they were third party and never actually inspected the item, and that having it sent back would destroy them financially, then offered me ten whole dollars for my trouble. Suffice it to say, I sent it back anyway. This particular specimen, however, is perfect. So you're welcome, as it was not easy to find one that was fully intact. The torso, arms, and legs are all identical to the first AVP figure, but the feet, hands, tail, and head are very different. This one also doesn't have the dorsal spine, so all things considered this one is actually fairly film accurate, and, other than the cheek muscles, this is the sturdiest one they've produced up to that point. At first glance, the figure looks like just a big black alien, but there are hints of purple, yellow, and brown cleverly blended in, making a fairly complex paint scheme. And here, for your viewing pleasure, and because I'm a daredevil, I will attempt to open the mouth as far as I dare to without snapping the entire lower half of the jaw. The bottom half of the jaw is soft rubber molded around a thin piece of hard plastic. Proportionally, this one looks fairly good when standing fully upright, and I can understand why it would be so sought after on the secondary market. Now we move on to the giant Predalien. This figure is one of those things that leans heavily into the what if we crossed an alien with a gorilla or a scorpion or a Pokemon idea. I generally don't like this for the Alien franchise, as I think there's something to be said about the creature only taking on slight genetic traits from those they are using for gestation. But after Alien 3, the ideas started to get really silly, and the Predator-Alien hybrid is just that, really silly, and definitely getting into 1990s Kenner-Alien territory. But it is a cool what-if creature, and a very interesting design. The Alien franchise went awry with AVP and AVP2 and Prometheus in constantly bringing the origins back to Earth. It negates the importance of never letting these things get a foothold on your home turf, and I think that the series in general needs to be wrestled out of the hands of Ridley Scott. Anyone who listens to Damon Lindelof can't be trusted with a franchise. It's my hope that the two new Alien projects bring the creature back to its origins of being an apex predator released into an environment without any natural competitors. If you ever want to see my thoughts on where where the series should go, you should check out my Instagram page, as I've put together a film pitch. But back on track. This bruiser is the biggest and chunkiest figure in the entire Hot Toys alien line, with one Achilles heel, literally his heels. The joints on this one are extremely loose, and the figure definitely can't stand. My fix was simple. I snipped off the fingertips of rubber gloves and put them over the ball joints so that they could get a snugger fit and then trimmed the excess. The paint applications on this one are fairly good, and you can tell it definitely represents a turning point in Hot Toys quality. But though this one is the more sought after of the two, the battle damage version is actually both a superior paint job, and the joints are much improved. Released as an Alien vs. Predator 2 Extended Edition DVD box set, the Battle Damage Pred Alien is a big departure in the box design, favoring a really interesting fold-out opening process that feels almost like a Chinese takeout carton. Inside you find the disassembled creature, the Special Edition DVD, and a Certificate of Authenticity, showing that mine is 1,327 of 3,000. If you stalk the Japanese Yahoo auction pages, you'll see these come through periodically, for pennies on the dollar. So if you're looking for a pred alien, keep your eyes open. I got this one for $75. But I did have one concern about it. The region that it came from was quite near Fukushima, so part of me wonders if some of these cheaper collectibles have been harvested from the no-go zone. But as of yet, it hasn't glowed in the dark, so I think I'm safe. As you can see here, I was actually able to get this one to stand fully upright, as the joints are far tighter. Plus, if you have the wolf predator, this one will look great with the blades puncturing through the dome as unlike the grid alien, the battle damage is actually sculpted in. The only missed opportunity here is that I think there should have been a little more articulation in the mandibles. They can be stretched open or closed, but they won't stay in position. There's nothing to ratchet them down, so they always return to their neutral position. 
I did try using a small fragment of a toothpick in order to get them to stay open in more of a roaring position, so I think there probably is a solution there using heavy gauge wire. Now the next phase of the alien figures released by Hot Toys. First up, the Alien Academy Award, which they say is a one-fourth scale bust, but it is almost the exact same size as their one-sixth figure. And of course, the dog alien from Alien 3. And lastly, the big chap. The dog alien is a surprisingly well-crafted figure, but suffers from rubber fatigue. There is a solution to preventing this, though, and that is painting the figure with Mod Podge, which will effectively seal the rubber and keep the figure from breaking down. So if you've got one, I highly suggest doing this, especially if you live in a more humid environment, as that tends to be the main catalyst for these figures' failure. This one comes with both the bendy and static hands that you've seen with previous releases, but unfortunately doesn't come with a stand, which is a shame, because there's no way to position him on all fours without some eventual drift, meaning that if there's nothing supporting him, he's going to tumble right off your shelf. The figure is so light and spindly, Mezco's arm joint stand actually works perfectly. The Runner, Dog Alien, Bambi Burster, Dragon, is the last true Giger-inspired alien design, and in my opinion, not one xenomorph that has come after has managed to capture the horror and beauty of the creatures from the first three films. And I know, the script for Alien 3 was a mess, and the explanation for this one looking different was that it came out of a dog, and another one was that it came out of an ox, but neither of these would explain why it doesn't have the tubes on its back, or other classically alien features that the previous iterations had. The explanation that I've always believed is that it only has one function protect the unborn queen. Unlike the drones or the warriors, this one seems to have a more Praetorian function throughout Alien 3. And the facehugger that laid it had spines on its back like the queen, so it stands to reason that you would have a facehugger that could lay two eggs, a queen, and something that could protect the queen until a hive could be established. So in the end, I don't think that this one needs to follow the panther, snake, gorilla, alien idea and could be easily retconned as something that happens every time a queen is laid. But that's my headcanon, ignoring all of the wooden planet nonsense from the original script that got scrapped. I think that a properly written sequel could actually tie together a lot of the alien mythos, in a way that's greatly more satisfying than a depressed android. What explanation do you like best for variations in the alien's design? Now onto the figure that would probably make number two on my top worst alien figures, the Hot Toys Big Chap. Why do I dislike this figure so much? Because I tend to judge things based on the ability of the creator rather than the total sum of the outcome, which is why there are really unpolished, low-budget films I will rate higher than Academy Award-winning Hollywood tentpoles. If you can do a lot with a little, you're doing more than most. And this figure was released at a time where Hot Toys could have produced the best alien big chap figure ever released, and not even really broken a sweat. They had the licenses, they had the talented team, and what they produced was an entirely inaccurate, derpy-looking alien frog monster that almost looks like a B-movie knockoff. And every time I look at this thing, I get angry. Angry that this is the only 1-6 scale big chap to go along with Hot Toys' incredible 1-6 scale Lieutenant Ripley. Everything from the extra thumbs on the hand to the skull under the dome is wildly out of proportion to the original. So Hot Toys, if you're listening, please take another crack at this one. An accurate 1-6 scale big chap will sell out before it's even released. And now you can see here, I put every big chap through its paces. I always try to reproduce the famous bowing photo. Because the arms can't really pivot inward, I use tiny black rubber bands to clasp the hands together. In the end, I'm sure there are a lot of collectors that are fine with this one, but when staring at it, all I can see is a combination of the flaws and dollar signs, which is why I have never been able to display this one, even though having it since it was released. And to prove that they never had any intention of getting the big chap's proportions right, Hot Toys also released a massively overpriced plastic bust that looks like it should be an Art Deco hood ornament for a really goth Rolls Royce. Having many of the same design issues as the full figure, the bust feels really plasticky in hand and has almost no paint detail other than gray and black wash. Strangely enough, there was an officially licensed tiny version of this made by another company, though this one has an inner jaw that jets out of the mouth and makes a screeching sound when you press the spine on its back. It also comes with a 48-page mini-book full of production photos and quotes from the film. So, if you like the design, but aren't sold on the price, this $10 item may be for you. Next up, we have the 1-6 scale Super Deformed Big Chap statue. Every time I look at this thing, I can't help but get the urge to grab a bag of sand and try to replace the item with it before being chased out of the temple by a giant boulder. 
If you like super deformed figures, all in all, this one is actually pretty nice, and the pose is definitely different than you usually find among the Funko Pop Fair. If you stuck with me through this entire video, I would like to thank you, because these videos are not yet monetized, and this entire endeavor is currently a labor of love. And every episode represents a sizable investment in the future of this channel. So again, thank you for being a part of this channel's growth. So what is Hot Toy's latest alien figure? why it's the alien warrior from James Cameron's Aliens. Released several years ago, we've come full circle, and here Hot Toys has released what may be the best posable alien figure in any scale. A figure so accurate and well-produced that when it's placed next to the big chap, it's hard to believe that they were created by the same company. From the box design to the product itself, you can tell that Hot Toys took just about every criticism they received from their previous Xenomorph outings and created one of the most striking 1-6 scale figures to grace our collective shelves. Though supremely accurate and beautifully painted, some collectors have had issues with rubber degradation especially around the mouth, and though I myself have not, I'm not going to discount anybody else's negative experiences. The other issue with this figure is that it is a more lightly posable statue than a true articulated figure. Because they went with a rather rigid, seamless body, your options for dynamic posing are very limited. But even with those issues, this figure still blows everything that came before it out of the water. There is detail covering every single inch of the body, and the paint applications are both subtle and rich. Even the dents on the front of the dome where the eye sockets of the big chap would have been filled in are present. This to me is the gold standard for 1-6 scale xenomorphs, and is one of the few figures I would say is actually worth the large markup that you find on the secondary market. There is one more 1-6 scale alien figure that I could have added to this list, which is the alien girl. I touch on her origins in my Top 20 Strangest Alien Figures video, but I decided not to include her here, as I didn't include any other of the 1-6 human characters that Hot Toys has released over the years, which is the five space marines and two Ripleys from Aliens, one coming with a power loader, the two spacesuit figures, and Lieutenant Ripley from Alien, and of course the previously mentioned alien girl. But where are we going forward? With Hot Toys having so many Star Wars and Marvel figures, and Disney now owning Fox, it's my bet that we will see more aliens in the near future, especially as Romulus and the TV show find their way to the screen. And if Hot Toys quality continues to improve as they've shown, I will definitely be there for another 11 figures. Now thanks for staying with me through this entire expose, and as always, remember, never stop collecting.